everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to be painting portrait today in watercolor using, as mentioned before, my Mary gouache. I'm sorry, my Mary watercolor, uh, this size 10 Princeton Aqua Elite brush, and uh, arch, arch paper. I'm using the black version of it, but it's the same paper. It's just, uh, this helps it to dry flatter. So, um, but yeah, a, a little bit about me. My name is Jordan Rose. I am a, I'm an artist. I, I mostly use water-based paints like uh, watercolor and gouache are my two favorites. And I, the subject matter I use, I focus most on is uh, portraits. Um, but um, enough about that. I think we only have a couple of hours, so um, I'm just gonna go go ahead and get started. Um, so yeah, if you have the the um, reference photo, I cropped in a little bit from the version that you guys have, just so that uh, I cropped into a composition that will fit on. Um, this is a nine by twelve piece of watercolor paper. Um, but yeah, just gonna jump right in. So I like to sketch, I'd like to start off my sketch with a uh, graphite stick. You can use any kind of pencil that you have on hand, but this is just nice because it prevents me from um, focusing too much on the details too early. So uh, yeah, just gonna, I like to start in just by blocking the silhouette, like the basic silhouette of the portrait. Um, so this uh, is super, using basic simple lines just to uh, get the general placement of the portrait on the page. I don't know if, I don't know if that sh is showing up. It might be a little bit hard to see uh, since it's so light, but yeah, basically you just start off very quick silhouette just to get the placement of how the portrait will sit on the page. Um, then I like to Um, quickly start blocking in the features, um, trying to get like the approximate angle of the, the eye line. And if you guys, you know, however, however you like to um, capture a portrait or capture a drawing, be sure to sorry. It's hard. For some reason, drawing and talking at the same time is tough, but painting and talking at the same time isn't. I don't know. I, I think you might. Uh, Maybe it uses like a different part of your brain. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's so. like, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do either. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be... I'm like, when it comes to like painting and talking, I'm much more, uh, I'm able to focus on my words way, way more when it comes to painting versus uh, drawing, just because I, I'm like trying to focus and make sure like uh, the features are lining up the way I want them to. Um, but yeah, I hope this shouldn't take, I like to keep the drawing to like around 10 minutes or so, just so that, uh, since it's gonna get painted over anyway, like um, the, it's, it's not gonna be like a detailed rendering or anything, more, more so just like a, like a land map, like a map just to, that you can use to guide your painting. Make sure like, uh, you have the features in the right place and everything like that. So yeah, once again, I thank you guys for joining. I hope you're having a good Thursday, a, a good week in general. Um, and yeah, uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. And
Yeah, I'm so, so by using this, like the sticker, like Boulder Graphite Stick, once again, it's easier to focus on the overall shapes and make sure that, that the shapes uh, are coming together how I want. And since they're so simple, it's easy to like just erase and move things around as you go. Um, in terms of, let's see, general proportions, this in such a short demo, it's kind of tough to go over like uh, the proportions of the face and everything like that. But if you guys had any questions, feel free to let me know. I think your point earlier about matching up the angles, like with the eyes and, you know, the shoulder to maybe the forehead and things like that are really good markers for keeping your proportions accurate. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. One of the things I, I like to do is um, like com a comparative me measurement. Like, basically, I find different reference points and try to line them up. So, like, for instance, like, I like to line up the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth and it, it forms like kind of like a triangle that's how you can get like your your perspective of the face so like this is the line that i look at the angle between the eyes that's the line that i like to look at it's like the shape they call it like a keystone shape it's like between um between like your eyebrow eyebrows on the brow ridge uh that's like a shape that you can use as well and yeah, basically everything is, I'm just comparing the angles of just pick, picking different points uh, in the reference and um, picking different points in the reference and uh, yeah, using them to uh, keep the proportions right. <laughs> yeah, it's really tough for some, I don't know why it's so hard to draw and talk at the same time, <laughs> but. So that's, that's, uh, that's a good place to stop for like the basic black end. And I'm going to switch over to like just a regular mechanical pencil. I think this is just HB lead um, size, like a 0.7 millimeter. Uh, but whatever pencil you have on hand, this is just for a little more accuracy to define the features a little more. Now that they're in a, the general place that I would like them to be. Um, and another thing, uh, if you have, you can have any eraser, but I like these kneaded erasers because they can, like, you can pick up graphite without completely erasing it. Um, I'm just going to go in, quickly to find the features. And with this, um, this paper has this arch paper in 100% cotton, like papers in general, they have a delicate surface. So you want to, you want to be gentle when you're erasing or drawing. You don't want to dig too, or you don't want to apply too much pressure as you're drawing because you don't want to damage the surface of the, the paper. So just like as you're drawing, make sure you use a light, a light hand, like And then another thing in drawing, I find that like using straight angles and lines kind of help me to accurately line things up a little better.
and it helps like to try to try to take a step back and look at it from a little further back you get a little bit of a better perspective to make sure everything's lined up how you want it to Once again, making sure those eyes line up. That's the one thing that really stands out on a portrait if it's off. It's like the the uh, the eyes if they don't line up, it's, it's super noticeable. Um, Jordan, is there something about portraits in particular that you're drawn to? Um, port yeah, th portraits in general, they're, I find them interesting just because, just because like the, every line can make a difference in like the expression, like the slightest, like the slightest line can change completely change the expression. Like if I put a line here, now she kind of looks like angry. <laughs> you know, it's definitely uh, it's stressed. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like, yeah, you got, like any, yeah, no, for sure. Like I saw a nuance in portraits, and it's it's a tricky, it's a tricky um, subject to master, just because people people in general are like you. Most people, you see somebody every day, so you're really familiar with like how a human face looks. So like, if anything's off in your portrait, it's very, very noticeable versus like, say you paint, I don't know, like rocks or animals or something that you're just not as familiar with. It's easy to have mistakes in there. You can have mistakes and people, you know, still get like a convincing result. But with portraits, find it a bit more of a challenge just um yeah it's, it's, it's a challenging yeah yeah it's a challenging subject matter so so that kind of makes it fun yeah and you're really putting yourself all out there you know and, and then you know it's pressure but you know it is great like you know um So I know you, you mentioned this was one of the first portrait, I guess, live demos. What yeah. do you know? What do people mostly, is it mostly like still lives? Yeah, we do flowers. Of? Like the next one coming up is seashells. It's just, okay. I've been asking for it. That and um, we did our first animal portrait. So I don't know if that counts. It, I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, that's a portrait. <laughs> it's a, it was drawing a cat. It wasn't like a specific cat, though. It's uh, okay. on the uh, Create a Color. Oh, nice. Tin. I don't know if you know um, Flo. He's an Austrian artist that does a lot of their cover work. So, okay. um, so they. Uh, oh, somebody wants to have you teach a, a gouache class. Mm -hmm. It's a great suggestion, Kim. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's the. Uh, Wash is fun. Wash is really fun. Um, and so it is, but you know, our watercolor classes in general are really popular. And I have so much respect for all of our attendees and friends from our community and our stores that, you know, embrace watercolor. You know, yeah. I, <laughs> that's just like what you're going to say. Um, oh, Donna yeah, has a question. Oh, yeah, sure. Because why does Jordan make such a specific detailed drawing when he is going to paint the image? Why not just put down a few markers and paint? Um, yes, to me, this uh, 
I wouldn't. Uh, to I guess I wouldn't consider this too detailed. Like it's mostly, at least for watercolor, since like, um, like watercolor is really unforgiving in the sense that. Um, what am I trying to say? Watercolor really helps if you have like a good starting place in terms of like the sketch. So like I I just like that yeah, put down like a few outline like a few marker lines that I can use as a guide when I'm actually painting. Um, I don't know if that helped answer the question, but to me, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm like I'm almost I'm pretty much done the drawing now. I'm just tightening some things up. But yeah, this is pretty much as far as I like to take the drawing for for watercolor. Like you don't really need too much too much more than this. Like she like uh sorry, I forgot the name of um yeah, I think question. that goes along with what I was, you know, my respect level is because watercolor is unforgiving. So um, and you know, and you're gonna be seeing these lines throughout the whole painting, right? As opposed to like if acrylic or even gouache will cover stuff up. So it's you know, not doing the whole sketch. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the drawing. One thing that helps, um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, I was I'm using the HB pencil. HP is nice because it's not too dark that the uh, the graphite was smear smear as you like start adding the water based paint. Um, anything like a two B or darker softer leads, those will bleed like much easier once you start painting over them. Um, and, and one the thing, darker leads will scratch the paper, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So HP is like the perfect. In my opinion, like a great, a good balance. Uh, before I start painting, I like to take uh, the needle eraser and just uh, like blot it over the top just to get rid of any like loose graphite that might also spread around as you're painting. But uh, okay, so. I'm gonna grab my paper towel. And uh sorry, we can play something. I have my palette over here. This is a separate cameras. Palette over here. I have a bucket of water. It's kind of out of the screen, but um, so that's useful. And then a paper towel. This is gonna be really helpful for controlling the amount of water in the brush. Um, Jordan, uh, Kim has a question. Yeah, sure. She'd like to know if you'd recommend using a color race pencil for sketching outlines for watercolors. Are you familiar with those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are nice. Yeah, those those work fine too. That's uh, those are nice because they won't they won't bleed. Not bleed out. I'm trying to think of the right word. They won't smear with water. Like color race, I think they're wax based. So as long as you're not like applying. If you apply too heavy of a layer of the color race, you can like form a bit of a resist because since it's wax, like the water will, it will like resist the water, if that makes sense. So if you sketch lightly with color race, that, that'll work fine. Um, and it's actually nice because it gives, it gives your sketch, uh, depending on what color you use, it can actually add to the painting as well. Um, great idea and then someone else is asking about a water soluble pencil yeah those are nice too yeah same thing with the color erase um with those I, i'm just wetting my paints but with the um the water-based pencils those are nice too if you use too much water too early you could completely wash your sketch away um and then like all your time spent, it, yeah, you can wash your sketch away. So that might, yeah, that, that might be an issue, but yeah, definitely I use that as well too. Um, and it kind of actually, those blend nicely with the painting versus like a little bit better versus regular graphite. 
I could have did that. Um, but for the painting, so one thing I like to do when I'm painting, I, I like to start with a base, a base uh, coat of like just dilute paint. Um, and I like to use complement. Most commonly, I, I like to use like complementary colors. Like in her skin, I'm seeing like a lot of, a lot of oranges and, and like the complement of orange would be sort of like this, mostly blues and blue greens. With watercolor, it's um, that base layer though, you want it to be a, a pretty di really dilute just so that it doesn't, um, Sorry, uh, with watercolor, I'm just gonna go in. And I'm mixing it to a consistency, like it's very, just a touch of their color. And what this does is it's gonna help, since it's the compliment, since it's a compliment of like the oranges and the skin tone, it will help to, help to desaturate them a little bit. I'm sorry, George, did you say which color that was? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm using turquoise cobalt. This is a nice, uh, nice turquoise color. Okay. Yeah. So for those that are using the dot card, that's on the right hand side in the middle on the bottom. For the hair, since it's like a light hair color, that's that's going to be mostly just the color of the paper. So we're going to leave that unpainted. And once again, I'm I'm just using the whole painting is going to be just with this the size ten Princeton uh, Princeton Aqua Elite round brush that should uh, be in the. Uh, we have someone asking if they can catch up, so maybe you can draw out you know what you're doing now so that they you know a little bit. Sorry, draw just draw out, out what you're doing now a little bit. So there's some. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Okay, okay, yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, and plus, um, the, I'm, I'm, once I get this down, I'm gonna use like a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. So that, that could be like a point where, because I, I don't know if I might, I probably meet my mic when I have the hair dryer on, just so it's not like too annoying. Probably a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, yeah, I kind of didn't realize I was. You're doing fine. You're good okay, on okay. And, and <laughs> no, you're doing fine. Kim brought up a good point is that everybody will have access to the recording later. Um, so if you needed to skip ahead and do, um, you know, to where we are now, then that's fine. But yeah, you're doing great on time. So don't feel like you need to rush. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That sounds good. Um, and then one thing I just, as this is still wet, I like to do like a quick value study just to like map up, map out like the shadows that I'm seeing in the face. Like there's a shadow sort of under her chin. Oh, okay, apologies for not uh, realizing the question. <laughs> uh, Julie wants to know why are you using the turquoise right now? Uh, so it's a uh, it's a complementary color 
to like in the skin tone, I'm seeing a lot of oranges. And I like to put a copy complementary color down as like the base layer so that when I'm putting the orange on top of it, it helps to like desaturate it a little bit. Sometimes like it can be a it can be tricky. Um we are painting with like a lot of oranges to make it like the color, like the color of skin tone, if you're just using straight orange, it can get like uh a little bit too saturated, like look sort of like like Simpsons characters a bit, like a little bit cartoony. Um and having like complimentary colors, that's it's a good way to desaturate that art, like the colors that you have on top. If that makes sense. Right. It's funny that you mentioned that because before the event started, I'm trying to get the blue out of my hair. And Allie told me I needed to do an orange wash to neutralize yeah, the blue. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the same exact concept. So color theory is applicable in many areas. Of life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I didn't know I didn't know about that. Um with like hair color pudding. Like like it, I, knew, a, I knew that it, like if you want to get if you bleach it and it's too yellow you can use purple like a purple toner or purple wash to neutralize it i didn't okay. think about i didn't but obviously I, I didn't think about the orange blue thing which is the same exact concept so yeah but with hair dye you can literally you can correct with just putting the complementary color on top interesting yeah yeah i love it but yeah, once again, it makes sense. It's color theory, basically colors that are opposite on opposite sides of the color wheel or complements. Um, and this is this thing is nice. It's just a little pocket, mini pocket color wheel. Um, basically, yeah, like I was saying, it tells you like it has like the different relationships between colors. So once again, opposites are complementary. Yeah, complementary. And then there's different like color schemes, triad, tetrad, so on and so forth. But um, so this is where I probably will use the hair dryer. But I guess I could uh, let people use this point to let people catch up. Um, if you need to use the hair dryer, go. You know, feel free. You're okay. But that pocket color wheel is by far, I mean, it's like less than $4, I think. And it's by far the most popular color wheel that we sell. I mean, just hundreds of them a year. So there, it's a really great tool. Yeah, I use it all the time. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to meet up just for a minute or so while I let this dry. Um, and I can still hear you guys. So if you have a question, I can stop. But yeah, here it goes. Sounds great. Right, that should be dry enough. 
with watercolor it's important to like it's important to manage like the moisture in your brush and on the paper because depending on either you can get different effects like if you want the if you want more control over the paint you want the paper to be drier in your brush be drier but you can get better blending where when there's more water um so now I'm going to start working my way down, starting from the hair. Um, the hair, it's like a, her hair is like, it's like bleach, sort of like a bond color. So I'm going to use uh, Naples yellow medium. Once again, pretty. Pretty dilute. And then just start. Adding it, um, and I'm like dabbing. I'm not just add, I'm, I'm dabbing it so that when it dries, it sort of creates like, I'm trying to make which like, the color text. is that, Jordan? Sorry, apologies. Oh uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. It's uh, Naples yellow medium. Naples yellow medium. It's just a just a uh, warm, like a warm yellow color, basically. You can use yellow ochre if you uh, can't find that, or raw sienna, either, either one of them. And then the hair, as it gets closer to like the root, closer to the roots of the hair, it starts getting, um, starts getting darker. That's like the new hair that is like growing in after she, I don't know, bleached it, I guess. Um, so for the darker hair, I'm gonna use some uh, uh, burnt sienna. And you can just like dab it. Dab it in and while, while the, uh, while that, while the um, paint is still wet, it will it will sort of blend and make like smooth transition. That's cool. You can see where some of the graphite gets picked up too, and that adds to your. Yeah, that, so that was one thing. Mentioned. That's neat. Yeah, that somebody who mentioned like the color using the the colored like water soluble water soluble pencils. That is also pretty cool because, um, yeah. It, once again, it will pick it up and introduce like different colors as well, and it's a pretty. It gives a nice look if you didn't want to use it's just graphite um, I'm gonna also add some burnt some burnt umber for the darkest parts of the uh yes it's burnt umber that's sort of saved for like the sort of like the border to me like her hair and forehead. All right. Now I'm going to 
start painting like the um, like the skin tone. Uh, a lot of puddles sort of start bleeding together, but um, I'm going to mix up some uh, permanent red deep and start adding it to like that initial Naples yellow medium puddle that's over here. Um, just to get sort of like an orange, an orange color. I'm just gonna bring it down on the forehead. Add a little bit more of that red. One thing with could you announce the colors again? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so 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 far, this is just this this puddle here is just permanent red deep. Sorry, permanent red deep. Naples yellow me and Naples yellow. Naples, I can't speak. Naples yellow medium. Let me grab. Take a I'm all, I'm trying. I'm keeping up and I. Putting things in the chat too. Yeah. So like the color choice is important and also like making sure that like you like using it as I'm going along, it's I it's kind of hard because the paper towel is kind of off in the distance, but like I'm going back and forth and adjusting the amount of the amount of water sort of in the brush. Um it's actually And like areas that are kind of like highlights. So it's a bit of a highlight like on on her nose. And you want uh just try to paint around it and reserve reserve that for later because any the lights and watercolor come from the paper rather than uh you're not gonna go back in and paint like it comes from the white of the paper rather than um white paint. So that's one of the things that makes watercolor a bit difficult to work with is uh having to for the nose to... did you just mix in more of the naples yellow to get that uh cooler tone than on the forehead uh yeah so the, yeah the forehead is more um it's the same mixture but the forehead just has a bit more of the permanent red deep whereas the Cooler color is more heavy on the Naples yellow. Thank you. And then under like the, this area is a, under her eyebrows a bit darker, it's a bit in shadow. So I'm gonna add more of that, uh, 
time in that red deep and let it sort of let a little bit of that uh, burnt umber from before mix a tiny bit of that in there. And having a palette where you can have similar colors in the same vicinity that helps with mix helps with mixing a little bit. Like you don't if you don't want to have if if you don't want to make uh, like messy what's the word muddy muddy mixtures like you you don't want this turquoise to get over here, so it's best to keep them segregated, separated. And add a little bit more burnt umber. This this is um this area is dry enough that this burnt umber should stay in place for the eye and the eyelashes on the right side. And right now it's can seem like it's a bit patchy, but um As you go along, you can you can uh, join areas together. Jordan, Kim has a great question about um, skin tone, mixing skin tones. What's yeah. the best way to learn how to mix skin tones? I'm guessing Jordan has done it enough so he just knows. Any beginner tips are appreciated. Beginner tips for skin tones. Um, what's a beginner tip? Uh, so I guess I'll I'll use this one exa as an example. Most of it is gonna be just Naples yellow. Mostly it's a yellow, a yellow and a red will take you pretty far. Um, but I have, once again, since I put that, uh, that turquoise down, that yellow and the red, it, it looks a bit more, it's not as saturated as it would look if it wasn't there. Um, what's a good tip? Basically skin tones are variations of, uh, yellows, reds, oranges, but they're just a bit more a bit more desaturated. Um. No, I mean, I think that's a really good tip. A lot of people, like the first time I tried to paint a, a skin tone in high school, it was burnt umber and white. And yeah. then my teacher <laughs> hand, it was acrylic, but he handed me red okay. side, hands a yellow light, and yeah. titanium white. And I was like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I do, I do think that that, that red yellow combination um, and then the underpainting of the complementary color is probably, you know, you put those two things together and I think you can really go pretty far with that, with swatching them out, you know? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then... Like the ex the exact color is not super. I mean, it's important, but what's more important is like get uh the values and like the like the va va values is like just the like this this is this is darker than this like the um man basically like the value structure you're painting is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting, if that makes sense. Um,
Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Did I answer the question? <laughs> Yeah, you definitely did. You definitely did. Oh, uh, yeah. So once again, so yeah, right now, basically, your skin tone is just. Uh, permanent red, permanent red deep, Naples yellow medium, and then burnt umber for the darkest areas. And like you, I think you 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 were saying you it was you had a yellow, you had an orange, and then you had white. And for us, white is the paper. So when whenever you dilute your paint, you can think of it as adding adding white um, to the mixture because watercolors um, watercolor is transparent. Uh, so any dilution that you add, basically, I like to think of it as, as adding adding white to the mixture. Right. This this uh the arch paper is nice because it's um it's one hundred percent cotton. It, it helps the mixtures. The like when you add paint, it doesn't dry immediately. That gives you a bit more time to blend in more colors and add them as you're going. But the flip side is it takes a bit longer to dry. So if you want, if you want to have, it's important to just keep track of what areas of the painting are wet and what areas are dry. So that's kind of why I'm working in like a single area, moving like moving around in different blocks. So like, as this is drying, I can work over here and then I can come back. Uh, so this mixture, once again, is just those two orange and red colors. I'm going to start painting the left side of her face. I like to have it clearly um, Like having well defined planes and blocks of color in my paintings. It's like, For the slip is is almost all just 
permanent red deep. But the top lip, since it's facing downwards, is going to be darker than the bottom lip. When I figured that out, my faces started to make a lot more sense that the upper lip is always darker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, depending on the the lighting, like it feels bottom. It, it's almost always. I mean, like yeah, almost people, always. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's one or the other, right? And so <laughs> when you, it just when you don't make that or put in that one shadow, it makes a big difference. Yeah, exactly. And um, so in this case, in this area, like the the top part is wet, while below it is dry. Since I haven't added any more paint, so if you like add paint along that border, it will keep the clean edge on this side, but it will transition. It will blend smoothly upward into the other side, um, into the wet side. That's like different uh uh like wet on wet adding paint wet into wet gives you smoother transitions while adding paint wet into dry gives you sharper edges um i'm not going to keep it like that but for now it's going to give like that uh like give a smoother transition going upward And then with another layer, you can just come back in and soften any edges that you want to with water. And this paper is is tough because you can you can actually come in and to a certain extent like scrub out different areas that you might want to change. But um Jordan, do you have any tips for, um, like, let's say you did wet on wet and it, you put, there was too much color, you know, it's starting to bleed too much into, or overtaking, um, do you blot it? Like, what do you do when you notice an issue right away? Oh, yeah, blotting, definitely you can blot. So blotting, you can just either use your brush, like clean out your brush and then just clean out your brush, clean out your brush, dry it off, and then you can coming in like blot it. Like, I don't know if you sit, can see it, that that's like lightening it up. Or you could just use a paper towel and blot it out. But that's a way that you can correct mistakes immediately. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say that pretty much blotting, that's the way to. So I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. I left this area unpainted. Uh, I want a bit more of a warmer orange color, so I'm going to add some just uh, a little bit of cadmium red light to this side of the face. It seems like it's uh, this side of the face is being illuminated by warmer light. And this side, this side is a bit cooler.
in like watercolor. Well, at least the way I paint, it's like always an ugly stage, like right in the middle of it. Um, but it, it usually it usually ties together, ties together in the end. But kind of crazy. Don't get don't get uh, discouraged. You just have to have to keep moving. That this I'm mixing up now is just uh Naples gel Naples gel medium and cadmium red light. How's everybody doing? Is it coming along okay or um I'm going to add some uh, Naples yellow and permanent red deep, but very uh, diluted to the chin. I want the chin to still be lighter than, uh, than directly under the mouth, but I just don't want it to be that initial base layer color. So I'm just going to blend that in a little bit. This is kind of how it normally works, just like jumping around. I, I'm not sure if it's, it might be a little, I'm not sure if it's uh, difficult to follow though. I'm like really I mean, you explained why, why so that one part can dry and then, you know, you can continue to work on the painting and you're doing so much color blocking that it really, really makes sense to, you know, work on different sections. I've learned a ton so far, so really appreciate okay. it. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. This is just a mixture, once again, just uh, Naples Yellow, uh, Permanent Red Deep.
So do you have, you paint, do you paint with watercolor often as well? Not at all. Oh, not and at all. I'm not as intimidated, <laughs> but no, seriously, like through all the watercolor classes that I, you know, I've developed and we, we pro we've provided and I've moderated, um, I mean, I come away learning stuff, but not necessarily as intrigued to actually give it a shot as I am really? now, because sure. I, I like to be able to cover up my mistakes and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, that kind of thing. I, I, and so watercolor has always intimidated me, but I'm, I, I mean, I'm not I'm definitely not as intimidated as I have been. So, um, I'm actually, I, I'm kind of kicking myself for not totally following along from the beginning. Uh, so I'll go back and watch the recording and do it. <laughs> you can kind of cover up mistake. It's, it's definitely not as forgiving as like acrylic or oil or something. But well, I mean, one way to mitigate that is just working in layers. So if, by slowly building up your layers, you can sort of manage it as you go. Um, but yeah, it is, it is, can be tricky for sure. I just want to get, uh, that this was just dilute, um, basically this puddle here, which is primarily coming red deep <laughs> Naples. Y'all mean it? I feel like I'm saying that a lot, <laughs> but that's, uh, it's only a few colors being used. Yeah, no, I think but, it's important and it's really cool what you're able to achieve with just a few colors. So yeah. the dilution of it really makes a big difference in how it appears. This is a uh, this dark color I just added for like the shadow border between the shirt and her uh, chest area that was uh just mostly mostly burnt burnt umber and some of that permanent red deep so yeah just browns yellows reds mainly combined with that turquoise uh base layer gives us a semi convincible skin tone and this is just a first, this is a first layer. So um, I'm gonna come back in and like, when it dries, come back in and establish some of those, sharpen up some of the shadows. Um, let's see. One thing that'll help if we put in the back, might put in the dark jacket in the background because that will make these colors, put these colors into context. It will let us know if they're too light, too dark by having something dark to compare it against. Um, so for the jacket, I'm just gonna do uh, Payne's gray. It's just basically like this, like a warm, it's like a cool blue, uh, black colors. Most of the time, paint's gray. It's just a mixture of uh, black and ultramarine. So it's just a nice, uh, almost a really dark blue color. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna add that to the jacket, keeping it. Um, In areas where like the jacket's lighter, those will be a bit more, oh, a bit more dilute. And then when it's darker, a bit more concentrated, but mostly just the same. Same paint's gray color for this first layer. You can come back in with another layer to like define like the lapels and different shadows. the border 
where it's like that dark, really dark shadow that's just concentrated. Payne's gray and then the lapel here. Just want to say that that texture that's popping out from the paper is fantastic for that jacket. Uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, cold cold presses, cold press paper is definitely nice. Um, because yeah, once again, you do you do get that uh, get that texture. You get a bit more control. Um. So a cellulose paper wouldn't give you the open time. Yeah, cellulose paper, cell, cellulose paper, it dries faster. It doesn't blend as well, and it's, it's a lot. It's a lot more subject to like pilling. You know, pilling. Yeah. Pilling is when like the paper kind of. Um, it's like the paper. Uh, the paper like sort of starts. The topmost layer starts to kind of ball up, give you like this undesirable texture to it. Uh, but yeah, watercolor, it just seems to behave a lot better on cotton paper. In my, in, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you're, um, you know, you're right, but it is it's <laughs> good for like practice stuff. And maybe if you're not doing a ton of wet on wet or not doing a lot of lifting, you know, then yeah, you for don't sure. need that forgiveness or. um, Exactly. Yeah, it's got its purpose. Yeah, for sure. And like swatches, anything where you, right. you just go in confidently, like one layer, like cellulose paper isn't great for layering, but it's. uh. But once again, anything quick and like fast studies, because yeah, that's why I mostly use it for. You don't want to use all your expensive paper with like just quick studies and swatches and stuff. Um, the jacket. Do you use hot press or rough surface at all? I know people often have a lot of questions about, you know, when to use the three different kinds or whether it's personal preference, that kind of thing. A lot of it's personal preference, but hot, hot press is nice with ink because it since you don't have all those, like, um, all that texture, it's easier to get, like, nice. Um, it's easier to get nice, like, sharp lines when you use ink. But, I mean, it's good for watercolor, too. I like hot I don't use it as often as cold press. Cold press is like kind of like the default, but hot press is nice too. Um, one thing hot press, you get a lot of uh what's the word? Like blooming. Like you it's it's easier, it's harder to get rid of hard edges and all right. Hot press, you have to it's like the washes dry with harder edges, if that makes sense. So you have to try to make sure you manage that, but it's not, you know, hot press paper is nice as well. Um, I'm gonna put in like a background color just to help to uh, distinguish like the white of the hair, help it pop out a little bit more. And this is all while I'm waiting for the face to dry, so. It's kind of strategic and just working on different areas while you, you let 
the area that you want to work on later dry. Um, for the background, I just want to put in like a nice dark color. So I'm mostly just paint gray. Probably add a little bit of burnt umber to it. But uh, yeah, just any dark color that will help you sort of help the um, silhouette of the portrait stand out a bit. And I want to throw some of that initial turquoise color in just for some color variation. And this is where uh, basically the border of where you paint the background, that's gonna define the silhouette of like the hair. So since the hair is like gonna be white, And the color, like you don't have to use, you can use whatever colors like you want for the background. It's, I'm just adding them basically, not randomly, but just, I mean, yeah, semi-randomly, just dropping it in just to get a, interest, uh, a more interesting look rather than just like a flat wash of one color. Uh, Jordan, is there anything that helped you get comfortable with, um, because it's obviously very natural to you, you know, you're, you're very aware of and controlled when it comes to how much water and paint is, is on your brush. Yeah. You need it for, for that specific section of the painting that you're working on. Is there something that you did, whether it's swatches or brush studies or anything that helped you get more comfortable with that? Um, or is it just practice, practice, practice kind of thing? I hate to say the generic. I know. Practice, I mean, practice. that's. that's <laughs> I mean, it is. You know, it's not like I'm. There's yeah, not yeah, a lot yeah. of shortcuts in life, but it's yeah. helpful to know the tricks, if tips, if there are. Um, uh, unfortunately, like I never. To, like I've done swatches, like the swatches I do are something like this, just so I know, like, uh what color is in my palette but I, I didn't um a lot of it is learning on learning on the fly like I I hate just saying practice 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 because it's not mm. it's okay if it comes to you later no biggie just yeah. thought you know if they're there was anything, I asked that question kind of frequently and um, I don't, I think everybody's just said, you just gotta, you gotta play with the the paint and the brush and, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, it's just, 
I don't know what honest. it is. I mean, my favorite thing about watercolor is you're literally doing one entire painting and you've got every different kind of line and every different kind of wash and you're doing it with one brush. Like, oh, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> very cool. <laughs> yeah, usually I would. Um, Cause my, my favorite brushes are actually, I, I love painting with flat brushes. Those are actually my favorite um, to use, but this is a nice, I like flat brushes because I, I like painting. Um, I like my paintings to have sort of uh, like angular blocks of color, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> I, can sh the, I can show you a preview of kind of what the end result is going to look like because I obviously practiced before I. <laughs> <laughs> this, but um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. It's 24. So, oh, wow. I like having like hard sort of like hard edges in the painting so hopefully you know trying to get something like this <laughs> maybe it, it'll come out the same but you know we'll see coming along though um you said 224 and what time are we what time is this uh scheduled until uh, we originally had it scheduled to end at 2 30 but we did announce the beginning that we we're going to go over 15 20 minutes so okay all right yeah i'm gonna I can speed up a little bit Okay. Um, yeah, so this is, this is dry. So we can, the face, like, so that's like the base layer of the face. And one thing to kind of help make it uh, uh, stand out a little bit more is if we start adding back in some of the, like the darkest areas. Um, so I'm gonna add some of that red. Some burnt, um, uh, burnt umber, the red burnt umber. Yeah, I wasn't keeping track of time. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna. Uh, I think I heard somebody. Let's see. There's background noise in here, so that could have been it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so this is just adding in some defining lines kind of uh, ties the structure of the portrait together a little bit. And then go back in with one more, couple more washes just to darken some of the colors. Keep putting my hand in. This is actually still wet, but it's fine. Some burnt umber. The hair. Oh, this, that's another thing that's pretty cool. Um, so one thing is a dry dry brush technique that, that can give you some like this hair texture. So where you uh, take your brush and you make you like dab on your paper towel to dry it a little bit. Um, and then if you add some, I'm gonna use burnt umber, but it's pretty, uh, it's not a lot of water mixed into it and then if you just drag it across, you can get like some uh, texture. That's how you can get like the texture of hair look without going in and like drawing every sing single hair strand. This is a nice shortcut that you can do in watercolor. Uh, Donna has a question. Yeah, um, sure. Donna, the, I have a fun painting with lots of color tones, which I like, but my figure looks much older and serious. How do you keep a likeness? 
Does this go back to what we talked about at the beginning with those angles and you were saying how one line can make a difference? Yeah, um, I, I find when with faces to keep them like looking a bit more youthful, uh, like less is more and less is more in terms of lines. Like, yes, there in a reference, there is like a line here, but in a painting, you can either soften it or basically don't draw every line that you see because that, that's the quickest way to make, make some mind look older than they are, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's a good. No, that makes sense because I think my tendency would be to do that, right? Like where her cheek comes down from the nose, like you were saying, or yeah, it's as harsh as another line or as defined as another line that I might um, might draw, but where it is makes a difference too, I think. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like I'm like, it's still in there, but it's not like, super dark so you want to like um basically that comes down to controlling like the softness and hardness of your edges um so this is a little a little light you're coming with another layer once again naples gel medium and permanent red Looks, it's a little intimidating, but I'm just uh, gonna put it down and then soften the edge by just adding my brush with water. Tamar has a really good question. Yeah. Uh, do you have suggestions about how to practice portrait watercolor in general? Do you recommend recreating photos like we're doing today? Or do you re recommend practicing for life? I'm a super beginner and really appreciate how you're explaining your process. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's how I, I learned from. I learned from just uh, photo, like photos. Photos is great, especially for beginners because they don't move. Like I paint a lot from life now, um, but that that was you know after a couple of years. But I, painting from life, you you definitely notice a difference, and that's actually one way that your style you'll start to reveal your style because painting from life, you have you're working within uh, like there's a there's a time constraint to it, and by having that time constraint there in order to get a result, you kind of have to be more direct and that directness reveals like your natural tendencies. But in terms of as a beginner, I mean, working from life is expensive, obviously, uh, not obviously, but um, in terms of models, like if you wanted to paint people, or I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself. Painting from photos is fine, like it's great because especially as a beginner, it's, it's free. Um, you have all the time that you need to um, finish your painting. And then as you go along, at some point you wanna introduce painting from life as well, cause that, it does make a, um, Definitely does make a difference. But I actually don't paint a lot from life from watercolor. I actually do gouache from life just because it's more forgiving. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so if you were like, just to say you were going to go to an open studio, an open figure studio session yeah. and say, I'm going to bring my, you know, I've been practicing from these photographs. I'm going to, I'm going to go paint this model from life. Yeah. Um, how long of a pose do you really need to, to do that? Like, and give you, and not drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Not drive yourself crazy. Um, por portrait poses, they're usually the portrait class poses. Those are usually two and a half to three hours. And it's usually broken up into like, uh, it's usually broken up into like 20 minute intervals. Like the model's not just sitting there for the full, uh, like they'll sit there 20 minutes, then it's like five or 10 minute break. And then it'll sit back in the same pose and you finish painting. So for a portrait, portrait is usually, I'd say like a three hour class, but for a figure, it, it, it range, it varies, but like the one I go to, it, it's usually a 20 minute increments. Like, tw like the long pose is at 20 minutes. Um, and I, I mean, 20 minutes with watercolor, you're not getting anything photorealistic. And that's, that's what, where I was saying earlier, how you can kind of find your style because by having only 20 minutes, you have to simplify and indicate things and that indication that's kind of, that's like your personal hand. Oh, Sandra um, wants to know how wet the brush is when adding color to the painting. Oh, uh, right now the brush is... Um, so like right now, since I'm adding, I'm trying to get like soft blends. It's actually a good amount of wet. It's not like soaking wet, but it's, it's, just, it's just damp enough that it's damp, but it's not like the water is not. If I go like this, no water is going to come out. What's a good way to describe it? <laughs> it's kind of hard because it's not like in person, but I'd say I say it's like if you had if you had like a paper towel that was wet and you like squeeze some of the water out, so it's not like dripping. If that makes sense. It's kind of like damp hair, right? Like yeah, um, that, so, yeah. But Andrew just <laughs> said just damp. Yeah. So like yes, damp, damp, yeah, damp. exactly. Yes. That, that's the know. best word. I, I didn't want to uh, say it because it sounded <laughs> weird like in my head, but that really yeah. is the best word. So yeah. Exactly. exactly. I don't I overcome way overcomplicated it. But yeah, damp. Yeah, exactly. Damp. Um I'm just going a little faster just so we can. I'm adding some really dilute red so that it's this uh the bottom lip is still lighter than the top lip, but it's not like that initial blue undercolor. And then leaving. I'm going to darken the top lip a little bit. And let me, uh, you know, let me know when I kind of, how much time we have.
I'm sorry, Jordan, I missed it. What color are you using for the darks this, now? Yeah, this is a uh, um, burnt, burnt. Oh, burnt some of the burnt umber. Okay. Yeah, burnt umber awesome. with some some of this uh, permanent, permanent red, red deep. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of that mixed in. I'm just using it to add in uh, the like the darkest areas. And that kind of starts to tie the portrait together a little bit um, with like this limited. Jordan, uh, one of the uh, attendees that says they're almost out of burnt umber. Is there another similar color that they could use from the dot burnt. card? Yeah, you can use, um, let's see, you can use sepia would work. Uh, Van Dyke brown would kind of work, but it's it's a lot. Uh, I would say sepia. Sepia is a good substitute. Se uh, sepia, sepia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's all the way on the right on the dot card, third one down. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Joanne wants to know if you ever use white. Not with watercolor. Um, with watercolor, I don't. I like to just use um, use it transparently. So I let the white come from the white of the paper. But with gouache, yeah, uh, yeah, white with gouache is definitely the one of uh, the most used color that I use. Um. But you, you could, that's actually, you can actually turn watercolor into gouache by adding, <laughs> you can use like your watercolor and just add white gouache and you'll basically get similar properties as gouache. It doesn't it's crack? Kind of, uh, sorry? It doesn't crack if you mix the two together? No, no, it doesn't, oh, cool. it doesn't crack. Watercolor and gouache are really similar. Like they have all the same ingredients basically except gouache some. Uh, gouache is uh, two things. Sometimes gouache has like opacifying agents, like um, basically chalk. Cheaper brands will use chalk. Uh, more expensive brands, it'll be like the same pigment, but just coarse, uh, more coarse. Like the pigment in the paint is coarser rather than like watercolor. The pigment particles are like really fine. That's why it's the chemist see. coming out. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys read Jordan's bio, but he's is. Am I right? You're a chemist. Is that your yeah, day I, job, or did you stop doing that to paint? I'm I'm painting right now, but I did get a <laughs> I got a graduate degree in chemistry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like the is the is the actual like product you know or not production, but um. So what I'm looking for, 
makeup of the supplies and how they're made? Are you inter- you really interested by that? I mean, you yeah, know that is than most of my staff in the stores about just now. So I'm I'm really oh really, really? Impressed. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah that yeah it's definitely interesting and in having that chemistry background helps to like you know, reading chemical and stuff isn't like intimidating to me because I'm familiar with it. But, uh, and also <laughs> I had, you know, I've been learning about that because I was actually like writing a book about gouache painting portraits. So, <laughs> um, so it's like at the fr- front of my mind at the moment. Um, uh, this was a little bit. You got another chemist in the group. Derek is a, is a chemist also. Oh, nice. Nice. What? Nice. What kind of chemistry? You must be painting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I mean, they done pretty. Biochem molecular biology. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was more so in organic chemistry. So, like materials and stuff. That's kind of right up my alley. <laughs> oh, Kim's asking about your book. When will it be out? Uh, sometime next year. Uh, scheduled for it in 2024. Yeah, that's the thing, like, painting in your mind's like somewhere else, and it kind of just. Yeah, I mean, let me think. That's kind of the, kind of the 2.45. So it is about 15 minutes over. Oh, We are, yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to do? No, I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Like, I can, you can always keep going. And keep at like, if I was to keep going, I would probably darken like... Like this area could be a little bit darker, but I mean, you can always find something to be finicky about with watercolor. One of the things is kind of knowing when to stop. One thing I do want to do is erase some of those initial pencil lines just to get them out. But I got, I think the general idea is kind of here. I probably, yeah. yeah, if I was painting, I would probably add. Maybe one more layer, but uh, yeah, because let's see this one. Probably one more layer to darken everything, but um, yeah, I guess when I, I didn't account for it, the time I would take, like thinking about question and answer. <laughs> um, you did great. I mean, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been lots of positive feedback in the chat, and you know, um, I think everybody had a great time. I know that I learned a ton um, and, you know, I'm super excited to see what everybody has created. Uh, they clearly did. I thank did. you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to thank use the code. Thanks. Register for the one that went out today and I will see you all again soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great one. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, no problem.